children of every age This is our world And the world's our stage We can laugh We can cry We can flush We can fly We can dance We can sing We can do almost anything In the world A beautiful world Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I see everyone saying hello in the chat box all around the world. That's lovely. I see some people really like that song. You were saying it was a very nice song. Lovely to have you all. Welcome to the second and last English Code lesson walkthrough. Still part of the Experiences series. Um, they were three, uh, two webinars and then two uh, lesson walkthroughs in this Experiences series. Um, I will certainly miss all of this. Um, last week we had the first lesson walkthrough, the one that I, in which I demonstrated a science and engineering experiment about toys that sink and float from English code level one. And today we're going to look at a lesson from level Four. Um, so if you attended the first lesson walkthrough last week, could you please write a quick me in the chat box? A quick me in the chat box if you attended the webinar last week. Lovely. Lovely. I can see lots of people. Fantastic. Um, so those of you who attended last week's lesson walkthrough, you had a follow-up blog post to read. You had some homework. Did you do your homework? You had a blog post to read called How to Integrate Steam in English Language Classrooms, all about making connections. So I'll bring that up in a bit. Have you read the blog post? Did you do your homework? Yes, some of you, yes, some of you, no, shame on you, you forgot. <laughs> okay, some of you did, fantastic. Okay, never mind, we'll go into that in a, in a bit. Um, got some good students here, fantastic. Today I'm going to be using a STEAM sample lesson from Pearson's series English Code, this time level four. And I'm going to walk you through the lesson and concentrate on the most essential steps for you to deliver successful STEAM lessons in your classroom. So let's look at the agenda for today. We're going to look quickly at what STEAM is for those new people we have in the room um, or people who might not be familiar 
go with the term. We're going to look at this lesson, this sample lesson, and do a little walk through it. We're going to do experiment time. I hope you're ready to experiment with me, and then we'll reflect on what we have done and, um, and see what we did in this session. Although this is a demonstration of an engineering experiment, and this is going to be about building strong bridges. And although it's a demonstration, it doesn't mean we won't interact, the same as our last lesson walkthrough. Please do feel free to use the chat box, ask questions, answer questions, contribute with your ideas, share as teachers and also as students. I will ask you to please pretend that you're students at some points and interact with me like a learner in grade four primary level. I will also be asking you to do the experiment with me if you have the materials nearby. Of course, these are experiments that you can do with material that you have at home. Don't worry, it's nothing uh, too sophisticated. So let's go into what STEAM is. Um, Someone just said in the chat box, science, technology, engineering, art and design, and maths. Excellent. There's Fernando also giving the answer. Lovely. So this is the, the acronym for STEAM, and it includes these five subjects. Um, the important thing with STEAM is that we want to integrate subjects. We want to integrate all this with language as well in our language lessons. So it's a, an approach that leads towards integration. And um, it doesn't mean that we're going to be doing a maths lesson in English or an engineering lesson in English. What we're going to be doing is teaching our language aims, teaching our English lesson, and adding a little bit of these uh, subjects in our lessons. Okay, um, so here we have a little definition. It's an integrated approach to learning that celebrates creative thinking, experimenting, and problem solving. While learners are involved in STEAM, they're developing all these different skills, which actually are skills for their future and, and life skills. So that's interesting too. Um, so let's look at the lesson for today. I'll start by introducing this STEAM lesson. In this STEAM lesson, students will learn about how bridges are built and what makes them strong. Then they'll build a bridge themselves and test its strength. So that's what you're going to be doing today. You're going to be building a bridge with me and testing its strength. I hope you're ready for that. So if you attended the first webinar, you um, the, the lesson walkthrough, you may remember that the experiment about toys and flo uh, that float and sink had a science focus because we're looking at, it's an experiment where we're looking at things that float and sink. But what other subjects were integrated in that experiment? Do you remember, those of you who came to, to the lesson walkthrough last week, we looked at the idea that it is science, but what was it apart from science? We were looking at the materials of those toys that sink and float. You remember Erica, okay. Engineering, Loretta, fantastic. We had an engineering strand in there as well because we were looking specifically at the materials those toys were made of and whether the materials influenced the fact that they would sink or float. So if you have read the blog post about connections and integrations, this um, integration of subjects should be easier to notice. It had an engineering focus as well. Um, understanding how materials work, properties of objects, characteristics of materials is essentially an engineering concept. But there was also a step that focused on developing digital literacy as well. Remember, we uh, looked at how to use a search engine to find out about other toys. And we looked for results for wooden toys by using a word and to join another word to it. And there was also a differentiation activity. Do you remember what the differentiation activity, what subject that was based on? I said, if you're a fast finisher, the fast finishers can go ahead and do an activity, which was about, do you remember? About grouping. So we brainstormed 
how we can group toys. We grouped by color, by size, by material type, toys with wheels, favorite toys, those that resemble transport modes. So this is a way of integrating subjects. Two main subjects were interwoven, science and engineering, but four subjects in total were integrated in one STEAM lesson by adding a little technology strand and a little maths concept in there. So if you think about bridges, which is the focus of this lesson today? What subjects do you think we could integrate? It could be two subjects, it could be three, four, or even the five of those subjects. Good, Marina says material. So that would be engineering again, wouldn't it? Um, good, all the five subjects. Okay, brainstorm with me in the chat box, you're saying perhaps five, perhaps four, math, someone saying, physics, size, good. So size is a maths concept, uh, material is an engineering concept, physics, that's science, lovely, art, absolutely. So you're thinking of different ways of integrating all these different subjects into one idea, which is bridges. You see how we can integrate all this really easily if we are creative. There is no right or wrong answer. You're just being creative. So you say that we can integrate the five subjects and I say that too. I say um, the same as you're saying in there, bridges. We can look at the science, the physics, forces on the bridge. We can look at technology. What about lifting bridges? A lifting bridge is a, a big machine, isn't it really? Um, a bridge is actually a big tool or a big machine that was created to help people in their daily lives. It has a function, which is to let people across from one side to the other, for example, over a river. So it has a function. And this is the definition of technology in STEAM. If you came to the misconceptions webinar, you will have uh, realized that technology isn't only about computers, smartphones, robots, not necessarily it could be, but not necessarily. It's a different definition that we have for technology. It's any type of simple or complex machine that helps us in our daily lives. Um, so a bridge, for example, a lifting bridge is a big machine, isn't it? Um, so that is technology. Engineering, building the bridges, learning about materials, as someone said, um, art and design, designing bridges, making plans, labeling the plans, making bridges with their bodies, perhaps, to get some drama and movement in there. For maths, we can measure our bridges, height, weight, length. We can look at the size. We can look at shapes, as someone said. Excellent. And Alfredo says, I include the social aspect for STEAM projects, like the benefit for the community. That is lovely. You have a social aspect there as well. Excellent. Lovely idea. OK, so in English code, you will find one STEAM lesson in each unit called Experiment Lab. See, at the top of the page, you have the lesson objective. The lesson objective today is I will learn how to build a bridge. So now you're my students and you say it with me. Say with me, I will learn how to build a bridge. We want our learners to become aware of what they're learning and what the objective is. So those of you who read the blog post, you read in the blog that the intention is not only to connect the different subjects like we've just seen, we could include five different subjects if we're looking at bridges, but in what other ways can we integrate and connect STEAM? How can we integrate STEAM? Not only the five different subjects, but in different ways as well. The blog post mentioned four different ways of achieving an integrated approach. One was connecting these subjects. The other was connecting STEAM with... Okay. STEAM with, what do we teach? What are we teaching in our classrooms? English, Lorena. Excellent. So we're integrating not only those five subjects together, but we're also integrating those subjects with English. Okay. Lovely. 
We can also integrate STEAM with something that we use a lot in our classrooms. We use it a lot with young learners. Uh, for example, we use songs, we use games. What else do we use in the classroom that we can integrate with STEAM? Speaking, music, okay, vocabulary, something that we like reading to children with illustrations what would that be stories there you go annabella i think it was who said it first stories yes we can connect steam with stories with literature and alfredo said before that he does steam projects so we can also integrate steam with projects so in this blog post if you want to go ahead and read it after this session you will find that we can integrate steam in four different ways one is integrating the subjects themselves the other way of connecting is connecting it with our language aims the other one is connecting it with literature reading a story or telling a story and then working on the different subjects the steam subjects and also creating a big project around it which is lovely too so you can integrate it in many different ways so um what could bridges be connected to in terms of language We've already thought about how to connect the five subjects. Now, in terms of language, how are bridges connected in your classrooms? When would you work on bridges? When would you, if you think of a unit of work in level four primary English class, think about your typical themes or your typical topics you work on, space, dinosaurs, animals, healthy living, the future, whatever you work on, where would you put bridges, what theme or topic? Many of you are saying town landscapes, countries, nouns of materials, town, excellent. Okay, maybe the city, neighborhood, holidays, or perhaps adventure. This lesson is part of a unit called Into the Wild. And the big leading question for this unit is, how can we plan a class adventure? So in this unit, learners will encounter streams and lakes and woods and rocks and twigs, leaves, branches, tree houses and bridges on their adventure. So this STEAM lesson is connected to the unit of work and the language we're working on. We're integrating the subjects and the STEAM with the language in the unit. It's not something completely separate. We're not working on something in the unit and then suddenly come up with a STEAM challenge just because we feel like it. It's always connected to what we're working on. Okay. Culture, said Alfredo. Lovely, Alfredo. Yes, Misiones. We have two international bridges, Argentina, Paraguay, and Argentina, Brazil. Fantastic. Yes, of course. So what we're going to do is look at different types of bridges. So this is when I begin to ask you to become learners, level four learners. Are you ready? I'll be talking back and forth to you, to learners and to teachers. Okay, so now as learners, look at these pictures their bridges in the chat box what do you know about bridges brainstorm with me what do you know about bridges just whatever comes to mind they're big they're small whatever comes to mind go ahead types of bridges they need to be resistant they need to be strong lovely stone old they connect yes suspension bridge modern symmetric Lovely words. Okay, you're of course teachers right now. You're not grade four English language learners right now. Um, I don't expect my grade four language learners to be uh, to have such sophisticated language to be able to brainstorm about bridges. But never mind. Um, okay, so uh, some of them open and close. What are they used for? Okay, they're ma mainly used, uh, mainly created with material. They're solid, truss bridge. Okay, you've got lots of words about this, but you're obviously being teachers right now. Um, so we're going to create a spidergram. So this is a spidergram, and it's useful for brainstorming ideas in class, for writing ideas or things we know about a topic. Um, so I would ask you. As learners, of course, I'm not going to ask you to do it right now, but as learners, I would ask you to get a pen and a piece of paper and focus on these 
two questions at the bottom, okay? Um, so what you're going to work on is materials and shapes. I want you to specifically work on those. So we could have worked on size and function all together. And now I want you to uh, make your own spidergram and write uh, ideas about materials and shapes specifically. Good, we've got stone, metal, wood, steel, concrete, iron, good, okay. What about shapes? What shapes do you see in bridges? rectangles, arch, lines, ovals, circles, lines, triangles. That's where I wanted to go really, to triangles. Good. Okay. So, um, yeah, steel and concrete are the most popular choices for modern bridges, for modern bridge construction, but other materials could include wood, um, iron, which is a different type of steel, plastic even, very strong plastic, and stone. Um, bridges also contained rope in the olden times mainly. So we're going to now watch a video about strong bridges. So pay attention and let's have a look at this video about strong bridges. This is the Golden, this is the Gate, Golden Bridge Gate Bridge in San Francisco. In San Francisco. It's, a it's a suspension bridge. bridge. Cars and trucks Cars and go, trucks over, the go over the bridge deck. on the deck. The deck hangs from many strong cables. Two tall structures hold the deck. The deck hangs from many strong cables. Two tall structures hold the cables. The cables. The Golden Gate Bridge looks solid, but it is flexible. When it's very windy, the bridge can swing. It can swing up and down and side to side. This makes the bridge strong. If the wind is very strong, cars do not drive on the deck because it is dangerous. Okay, so we've learned about the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco. We could look at different famous bridges in other places in the world, couldn't we as well? And analyze those, what types of bridges they are, etc. Okay, so um, I'm going on to this slide now. And if we look at that bridge that you can see on the slide, what's it made of? What do you think that bridge, that big bridge is made of in point one? What shapes can you see? Okay. Okay, wood, steel, iron, metal, perhaps. And what's it? And what shapes can you see? Arches. Okay, good. What makes bridges strong? Then, what did we learn in the video? What What is something that makes the a bridge strong? It's flexible. It's flexibility. Yes. Yeah, so the structure of it, the material it's made of, um, also the use of triangles and arches make. Bridge is very, very strong. Good. So you would write many of these ideas on the board. Now, I'm just going to, uh, you, we're going to listen to an audio track and you would normally listen to this audio and follow the text in your book. What you will have to do with this audio is there's some missing words in your book and you have to write those missing words under the pictures at the bottom. So you need to complete the missing words for each bridge. You haven't got the book, of course, but please get a pen and a piece of paper or remember it or write it in the chat box um, and jot down those missing words, please. So you would write number one and the missing word, number two, the missing word, number three and the missing word. Are you all ready? So it's the type of bridges that we're going to be looking at now. Are you ready to write down the types of bridges, those missing words? Yes, says Yaren. Lovely and Marina too. Fantastic. Track nine. Track nine. Read. Read. Listen. Listen. And complete. And complete. There are many. There different are many types different of types of bridges, but they all. But they have all a road have a road or pathway. Or pathway. Engineers. Engineers call this call the this deck, the deck of, the bridge. of the bridge. We can describe. We can bridges describe by bridges the by the position of the deck. Of the deck. An, arch An arch bridge has a strong, has a strong arch, arch under the under deck. The deck. A truss, a truss bridge has a deck has a at the, deck bottom, at of the, the bottom of the structure. A suspension bridge has a deck that hangs from cables.
Okay, some of you were saying there was a little echo there. Um, I can see some of you were able to hear it very, very well. Some of you said there was an echo. Um, okay, so number one, those of you who were able to hear it properly, number one, you say an arch bridge. Okay, can you tell from the picture how that is an arch bridge? You can see the arches in it, can't you? Number two, you say it's a truss bridge. Okay, and number three, you say it's a suspension bridge, like the Golden Gate Bridge. Um, good. Okay, now look. What type of bridge is A? Let's see if you've learned from that audio track. What type of bridge is A in, the, in these pictures here? An arch bridge. What type of bridge is B? A suspension bridge, good. And what type of bridge is C? A suspension bridge, fantastic. I mean, sorry, a, tr a truss bridge. B was a suspension bridge. C is a truss bridge, well done, yes. So you've learned a lot about bridges, haven't you? Lovely. Okay, now, what you're going to do here is you're going to read, listen, and complete. I'm just going to read this out to you. So what you need to do is label the arrows. You've got red arrows going down and blue arrows going up. You've got to label the arrows using the words pull up or push down, okay? So I'm going to read it out for you. Imagine a heavy lorry is going over a bridge. The weight of the lorry is pushing down on the deck. The bridge isn't going to break. The structure of the bridge is pulling the deck in the opposite direction. All bridges need a balance between a force pushing down and a force pulling up. A bridge breaks if one of the force is greater than the other. So someone said physics before, didn't you? There you go. There are the, there's the physics, the forces. Okay. So um, what would, how would you label the red arrow? What would the red arrow be? Pull up or push down? Good, push down. And what would the blue arrow be? Pull up, fantastic, good. So we're learning about the science of force. Now listen again and follow in your books. I'm gonna read it out for you. Um, and I need you to tell me which is the photo with the most triangles? Which of those bridges is the one with the most triangles? So listen first. A triangle is a strong shape. Imagine you are pushing down on the point of a triangle. It's difficult to break. Triangles are used in many bridges to make the structure stronger. So which photo has got the most triangles? Bridge number two. Very good. Fantastic. You got it. Now, if I asked you, what's a triangle with two shapes? Can you draw a triangle with two shapes? You would just have to divide it into two shapes. And what two shapes do you get if you divide a triangle? What shape do you get? Two triangles, good, Anna. Yes, you get two triangles. Okay, so you've got two triangles inside your triangle. That is something that we can do with bridges to make them even stronger. We're giving them that column there in the middle to make that triangle, which is already strong, even stronger. Lovely. All right. Now that we know all this about bridges, we know what they're made of, we know what shapes we can see in them, we know how the force uh, works in on the bridges, we're going to go into the experiment. Now what we're going to do is this. How can I build a bridge? Number one, connect the ice lolly sticks, we need ice lolly sticks, with clay to make triangles. Number two, connect the triangles to make a bridge. Use a ruler for the deck of the bridge. Remember what a deck is? We heard that word before, the deck of the bridge. Test the strength of your structure using coins. So materials, ice lolly sticks, clay, a ruler, and coins. Now I'm going to ask you, 
What do we need? Let's see if you can remember. What do we need for this experiment? Clay. Ruler. Ice lolly sticks and coins. Fantastic. Okay, those are the four things we need for this experiment. We might have to replace those with other materials because I don't expect you'll have lots of ice lolly sticks lying around or perhaps you have. Um, I had, uh, but you might not. I don't know if you'll have clay at home, probably not. So we're going to think of ways to replace these materials with others so you can do it at home. Someone saying toothpicks. Well done. Yes. Cecilia says matches. Fantastic. You're being creative and thinking of ways to replace these. Good. We'll look at those in a second. How can you do the experiment? What do you need to do um, in the experiment? We need to first make triangles by connecting the ice lolly sticks or the straws, as you're saying, or the spaghetti. Good. Okay, then we need to connect them to make the bridge. Pencils as well, glue, fantastic, you're thinking. We need a ruler to make the deck. And we need coins to test the strength. If it's not coins, what could we use? We could use nails, we could use noodles. We could use beans, anything small, rubbers, pebbles. Good. Anything small that you can put, cereal, anything that you can put on it that's nice and small and you can count how many of those you can fit on your bridge. Good. Toys that are small, little cars. Lovely. Okay. Good ideas. So I asked you what we need and what we need to do because I want my learners to become aware of what they need to do experiments, just like scientists do. Scientists plan, they think about what they're going to do and how they're going to do it before they do it. So it's the planning stage. We want them to uh, develop the skill of planning before they do something like scientists and engineers do in real life. So if you're in the classroom, uh, learners can work collaboratively to do this, but now you are on your own at home in the staff room, so you're going to go ahead and try it as it's unlikely that you'd have clay ice lolly sticks at home. I'm going to ask you to please be creative as you've been doing just now and go and get anything at home that you think you can use to build a bridge today. No matter how strong it will be, just for the sake of using this example with you, go and get anything that you can think of to build this bridge. Um, so you thought about coins, rubbers, noodles, pencils, um, toothpicks, glue, cotton buds, you're saying spoons, okay, anything you can think of that you think will you'll be able to make a bridge with. And if it doesn't work out, it's also okay. And that is part of STEAM as well. These are experiments. Experiments may fail, may succeed. We don't know until we do the experiment. That's what it's for. So if it doesn't work out, it's fine as well. Okay. It might fall. And that's the whole point of it. We want to make a strong bridge. We're, we're learning how to make a strong bridge. If it's not strong, it will fall. And that's fine. We're learning what doesn't make a strong bridge. Okay. So anything you can find to make a bridge, go and get it right now. One, two, three, go and get your materials. Collect your materials to create a strong bridge. And I'm going to ask you later what you got and how you made it. So go and get your materials. I'll count down from 10. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. Why don't you sing a song, says Anna. Yes, I did sing a song in the last lesson walkthrough because that was grade one. So I sang a little song. In grade four, I don't know if I would, but if you want, I will. <laughs> Go and get your material, your material, your material. Go and get your material, I'll be waiting for you. Go and get your material, your material, your material. Go and get your material, I'll be waiting for you. One, two, three. You should all be back. <laughs> there you go. You asked for it, you get it. Okay. 
I hope you've all got your materials. Let me know if you're with me. Have you got your materials? I've got a nice thumbs up. Okay, yes, Marina's got her materials. Erica, Lorena, Cecilia. Good, excellent, that's fine. Monica, Agatha, excellent. Okay, you're with me. So all of you who are with me, we're going to start building our bridges now. Okay, so we're gonna have a few seconds. I'm not gonna give you long. Um, I'm just gonna give you a few seconds to build your bridges. Are you ready to do it? Okay, and I'm gonna be making my bridge as well. Ready? Ready to start. Okay, come on, let's make our bridges. I've got my ice lolly sticks, all different colors, and my clay. Okay, here we go. I hope you're doing it with me. Building our bridges. London bridges falling down, falling down, falling down. London bridges falling down. Okay, we could sing a song if you like. I can see you like songs, so we could sing a song while we do it. Okay. We're building our bridges, lots of triangles to make our bridges nice and strong. Okay. Or you might want to make an arch bridge. How about that? Okay. I've got one triangle ready for my bridge. There it is, okay. How are you doing? Let me know when you're done. Write done in the chat box if you're done building your bridge. And I'm gonna do magic now. Abracadabra. And here's my bridge. Ha, I was fast, wasn't I? <laughs> of course I had that ready. Okay, I've got my bridge ready there with my ice lolly sticks, my clay. I've got my ruler. Good, Rasha, you're done. Who else? Who else is done? My bridge is flexible. Yes, it is. You see, it is flexible. Okay, pasta. Fantastic. Done. Lovely. I've got my ruler on it. Actually, I I cheated a bit. My seven-year-old son helped me build, build this bridge and he was very good at it. Coins, one, two, three, four, five. Have you got your coins or your noodles or your beans or your um, buttons? Yes, and it's colorful too. Do you like it? <laughs> okay, it's. I think it's a very strong bridge. Yeah, I can get lots and lots of coins on there, can't I? There we go. Oh, Agatha, your bridge is falling, is it? Okay, Agatha, tell me, what did you use for your bridge? Okay. Oh, Susanna, yours is down. It's not so strong. What did you use? What did you use to build your bridge? <laughs> Cards. Okay, that's difficult, isn't it? Yes. What are you using to attach the cards together? Did you use anything to attach them or are you, just, are you trying to just balance them? Because that's always difficult. Lovely, okay, I did cheat, so it's not really uh, fair to have such a, a, a colorful bridge as mine, really. <laughs> okay, spaghetti bridge is really strong, lovely. Did you make a spaghetti bridge? Your bridge is falling down, it's made of matches and a ruler. What are you using to connect the matches? You're using rubber bands, Agatha, okay. Okay, so you see, we tried different materials here because we're in different places and we haven't all got the same material. Chewing gum, are <laughs> you using chewing gum? Um, you're very creative. So we're all, look what just happened. It just, my coins all just fell off. Look, it's destroyed, it's destroyed. 
But never mind, never mind. We're working with frustration here. It's fine if it falls. We're tolerating frustration. Um, you can compare the weight, Serena says. What will destroy the bridge? 10 coins or 10 buttons? That's great. That's great. So you're going to compare the weights of buttons and coins. Yeah. You use some clay, Monica. You're, you're the lucky one with clay at home. Okay. Um, so we tested our bridges. Some of them fell, some of them didn't, but we were using different materials. And that's interesting as well. A follow up activity for this, if you are doing it at, at school and you are using the same materials, a good follow up activity would be to use different materials like we did today and see what happens with the different materials. Okay, so we've got a little box there that says there are da -da -da, triangles in my bridge. It can carry da -da -da, coins. So that's what we would have to complete. Um, mine has three triangles and it can carry, it carried loads of coins. I didn't finish counting them in the end, did I? So um, when you're doing STEAM, you should give your learner STEAM feedback. So while they're working on building their bridges, uh, you would go around saying, wow, you're great engineers. Um, I like your thinking. You're great mathematicians making those perfect triangles, things like that. That type of praise and that type of feedback is what works with STEAM, not just excellent, good job, but actual STEAM feedback, okay? Um, so that is interesting to help your learners feel confident doing this sort of activities. They will start feeling much more like engineers or scientists if you're giving them this type of feedback than if you just say excellent or great. Um, so you could you you could try this experiment again as a different way of um, of extending this activity. You could make bridges out of different shapes, like using squares and see what happens if we make a bridge out of out of squares or out of rectangles and then test its strength as well um and then we'll go back to looking at the lesson objective and so my question is do you know how to build a bridge yes or no do you know how to build a bridge um someone asked what what level this is this is level four so yes, you know how to build a bridge. It might not have worked today, it might have fallen, but you still know the idea, you understand the concept of the triangles being strong shapes for making bridges, and you understand about the structure and the materials. So although it might have fallen, it doesn't mean that you have not learned. So say with me now, now I know how to build a bridge. Come on, everybody. Now I know how to build a bridge. Well done, you're great engineers and mathematicians. So what did we do today? Let's notice some of the essential steps and tips that made this lesson successful. This is the teacher's book page for this lesson. The teacher's book is very well guided. It's super step by step, lock, uh, lockstep fashion to guide you very smoothly through the lesson and how to deliver it. So you don't have to know too much about it beforehand because you've got it all in the teacher's book. Um, so you don't need to be scared of doing STEAM and doing experiments or understanding the concept. See, they're quite simple concept. Even in a grade level four, this is something that we can understand even if we're not scientists, engineers, mathematicians. Um, so the teacher's book guides you very, very well. I didn't um, make up anything new. I didn't invent anything new for this lesson. I just followed the teacher's book as it was. So that's all you need to do with that. We watched a video. These videos are in the Pearson's um, English portal in the resources section. You will find videos like the one we watched about the Golden Gate Bridge. You can always um, pause the video if you want, ask questions, what can you see, what's it made of, what do you think will happen, why is this happening, if you want to ask questions to your students while you're, they're watching the video. Um, you can ask them to brainstorm ideas about what they're going to watch, to tell you what they watched after the video. 
we I try to adapt it a little bit to the online lesson. So if you're teaching online, this is something that you might have to do. Think about how can your students build a bridge if they haven't got clay at home or if they haven't got ice lolly sticks. If you're doing it online, think about how you can adapt it. I know it's perhaps not ideal, but we're still learning about the bridges. The concepts are still there. OK, um, it was divided into two parts. So we had the intro for learners to use the language to get uh, to grips with the topic of bridges. Uh, we watched the video, we did some audio, uh, some listening tasks with the audio. And um, we had a lot of language presentation, language practice, and then comes experiment time. So we don't go straight into doing an experiment. Okay, we're gonna do an experiment today. Get your material and make a bridge no because we don't want to just make a bridge what are we learning if we're just making a bridge we want to learn all those concepts beforehand or the language um that that, that that you want your students to learn about bridges while we did the experiment the idea is to talk through the experiment while you're showing it demonstrating try not to do the whole thing for example, perhaps just get some ice lolly sticks and make one triangle just to show how you would do it. But then don't do the whole thing because otherwise they will just be copying what you did. And we don't want that happening. We want learners to be thinking and creating something unique. Um, so don't demonstrate the whole experiment every time. You'll ruin it for them. It's them who have to do this. And... Um, I Irina you can in says that you can integrate the topic into the grammar theme of comparatives and superlatives. If you build two or three bridges, you can compare them. The strongest, the longest, excellent, Irina. You can add much more language in there too. And comparatives and superlatives are actually maths concepts. Um, yeah, it's a big, bigger, biggest. All that is a maths concept really, isn't it? Um, we, I gave some steam praise, I gave you some examples of how you would do that, not just good or excellent, but you are great engineers, fantastic mathematicians, lovely thinking, things like that. We connect it with steam jobs. If you're asking your learners to plan what they're going to be doing, you would explain to them, this is what engineers do before they start building something. They have a plan. So we have this planning stage that comes before actually going into building. I know the building is fun, but we've got to plan it. We'll label the parts, etc. whatever you want to do with them. But um, talk to them about this is what mathematicians do. This is what engineers do so that they are aware of the fact that that's what we're doing. Um, we went back to the lesson objective at the end. We want them to know what they're doing, what the objective is, and uh, we want them to know that they have achieved that objective. And we have an activity book as well, where uh, you have some extension activities. We can, uh, there is an, an activity to write down a report about what happened in the experiment. So we have writing down the name, number of ice lolly sticks, the length of the bridge, number of triangles, the number of coins, and writing all that down. So what we can do there as well is discuss the importance of recording data. Why is it important to record data? What do you think? Why is it important to record data, to report results? Why do you think it's important to write things down and to record your data? to remember things, to recycle vocabulary, you're saying, working as a scientist, to internalize, yes, to assess, good, to avoid future mistakes. You've got it written down and then you can work on that and say, okay, why didn't that work? Maybe we should do something different. Good, lovely, yes. It's something that scientists do, that engineers do. Recording data is important. It promotes the development of um, documenting, organizing information, you could even um, record data, not only in a chart like this, but it could be a sketch. You could be labeling, you could do some note taking, 
pho um, photographing, if you're looking at plants, for example, and how they grow over time, you will take a photograph of each one of, of the plant as it grows, and that will be the data that you're recording. Uh, you could videotape something. So this uh, data is then useful for analyzing, interpreting, assessing, and improving. Lovely. So you've got self-reflection as well in the activity book. It says read and circle, then discuss with a partner how difficult was the experiment. So you, you're going to have your learners reflecting on the experiment. Things like connecting the ice lolly sticks. Was it difficult? Was it OK? Was it easy? Using clay. Was it difficult? Was it OK? Was it easy? Connecting the triangles, the same. So they've got a little reflection at the bottom. And um, you've also got three light bulbs there at the bottom of the page. And this matches the lesson objective. I know how to build a bridge, it says. And you've got three light bulbs to color in according to how comfortable your learners feel they have completed the learning objective. So how many light bulbs would you color in for yourselves today? How many light bulbs would you give yourselves? One, two, or three. Three, of course, is I know a lot about building bridges. OK, many of you say three. Some of you say two. You need to learn a bit more. <laughs> Good. Um, but most of you three, so you've learned a lot. So that's what we've done and how you can go about a STEAM lesson in your classroom. But if you want to learn more about STEAM, you've got the Pearson Experiences website where you will find a lot more information about STEAM. You've got a pocket guide to download, some resources to download the links to all the webinars that have been recorded someone was asking about um, seeing the webinar again so you can watch it there you'll find the links to the webinars you've also got Pearson's blog to look into with four blog posts about steam about steam myths how to plan a successful steam lesson integrating steam and stories which is a really nice idea if you like using stories and how to integrate steam in english language classrooms which is the blog post that i was talking about today if you want to read that after the webinar of course you are free to do so and if you want to learn more about english code you have the link there and it might be in the chat box in a minute for you to click on if you want to learn more about English code, you can have a look at the catalog and find out more information about that. Um, so thank you all very much for your participation, for joining me in this walkthrough, for doing the experiment with me, even if some of them failed. Thank you for being confident to do it with me. I will miss the STEAM webinar series a lot. It ends today. And I will miss all you lovely teachers and brave people who joined in. So I hope you now feel confident enough to put this into practice and um, in your next STEAM lesson, which will be a success, I'm sure. Thank you very much, everyone. Bye for now.